And John Fung used to say that there were three aspects to doing breath meditation, practice and concentration. One was doing it, the second was maintaining it, and the third was putting it to use. Like right now, we're trying to do it and maintain it. Get the mind to the breath, try to keep it with the breath. Experiment with different ways of breathing to see what's comfortable right now. Experiment with different ways of conceiving the breath that allow the mind to settle down and stay with the sensation of breathing. And connect that with the different sensations in the rest of the body. Because you want to get the breath comfortable and then allow that sense of comfort to spread. So you have to think of some vehicle by which it will spread. pathways through the body. You might think of the blood vessels, you might think of the nerves. They're all involved in the movement of energy through the body. And as you get really sensitive to the breath, you notice that they are connected with the in and out breathing. So that's the doing. Then there's the maintaining, which is the whole rest of the hour. Trying to stay here and dealing with a mind that wants to do something else. Some of the members of the committee want to stay here, and others want to go wandering off. They say, here's a whole hour we can think about all kinds of things. And you may find yourself dealing with all kinds of things throughout the hour. Sometimes the distractions get so much it gets frustrating, but at least you're dealing with them. Trying to recognize them as distractions and come back to the breath. Another one comes up and you get slipped. Slipping away from the breath will come right back. You're learning an important fact about concentration, which is it starts out in little moments. And the trick is to keep them connected. And so sometimes the connections get kind of loose, but after a while you find that you can sense when the mind is about to go off, and you can head it off at the pass. In other words, re-establish mindfulness even before it's lost. And that way the concentration gets more continuous and begins to develop more of a momentum. Sometimes you'll be dealing with distractions outside as you try to maintain your concentration. Try to keep your comments on the distractions as minimal as possible. In other words, a sound comes up, the sound can do its own thing without your having to comment on it. And don't feel like you're being invaded by it. Think of your body as being like a big window. The breath is the frame, and things can go right through. You don't have to catch them, you don't have to repel them, push them away. They'll go right through and they'll disappear. As for thoughts, sometimes you have to learn how to think through why you don't want to think the thought. Other times you simply just let it be there, but you don't have to get involved. Watch out especially for the thoughts that say, well, I've done this now, what's next? A large part of the meditation is learning to do something repetitive. Just stay here, stay here, stay here. So you have a clear and steady point of reference in the mind. Once you've got this point of reference, then you can see other things moving, sometimes very subtle things moving that otherwise you would have missed. They would have been lost in the fog or the dust raised by the mind as it moves around. But here is it still. Well, the dust begins to settle and little things begin to appear. little stirrings here and there in the body. Many times they could turn into a thought, or they could turn into just another aspect of the breath. You've got the choice. So try to breathe through them. Keep everything in reference to the breath as much as you can. 
then you find that you can maintain the state of concentration for longer and longer periods of time until it becomes your default mode. It feels natural to be here. The center of gravity shifts. The real test for your concentration, though, comes when you have to leave the monastery or go in an environment where there's, there's conflict or go back home. And you suddenly find yourself slipping back into your old roles, your old ways of thinking. This is where using the concentration comes in. And using doesn't mean just trying to stay concentrated in the midst of these other things. You've got to look at your attitudes. You've got to look at your assumptions. The concentration is there as a point of reference. But your assumptions are going to be the big issue. When you're at the monastery, you're playing by one set of rules. When you go home, you find yourself slipping back into the old games. And you have to question the mind's willingness to take on the old rules and the old games. What are its assumptions about itself? What are assumptions about you? What are your assumptions about the other people around you? What are the assumptions about what it means to lose out in the old games? And why do you want to be even bother? The rules of society are one thing. The Buddha's rules are something else. The Buddha's rules are you don't want to harm anybody. You don't want to harm yourself. You don't want to harm other people. And there must be a way to do that. Society tends to assume that, well, somebody's going to get harmed. As long as it's not me, it's okay. That's the attitude. And there's kind of a trade-off. Sometimes the jobs that are most destructive, the most harmful to people, those are the ones that pay the best. And we live in a society like this where money plays a huge role in measuring people's worth. Getting ahead plays a huge role. But getting ahead in what? You want to have the concentration there in your mind as a reference point so you can stand apart from those rules, those values, and realizing they're not all outside. Some of them are, have been internalized. They're still lurking around in your mind. And here's a chance to deal with them directly. Well, you're at the monastery, they may not be so quick to play a game, play the games. So you have to be on your guard as you leave. Do you really want to play by the rules that society plays by? Or are you willing to be the oddball, but the wise oddball? That's how you use your concentration. Use it as a basis for remembering what the Buddha's values are. Because as long as you associate the breath with the practice and all the skillful qualities of mind that you've been learning how to develop around the breath, it becomes your connection to those qualities, even though nobody else around you when you're outside may be thinking in terms of those qualities or holding on to those values. What this means is that the practice is not just about the techniques for getting the mind to settle down. It's also about the set of values, about what's really important in life, what really is a gain in life, what really is a loss in life. Society me measures gain in terms of money, status, and praise. Here we measure gain in terms of mindfulness, alertness, ardency, concentration, discernment. Those are very different things. All too often, if you win at the game outside, you're going to lose at the game inside. You have to ask yourself which game, which set of rules really has your best interests in mind. That's pretty amazing. The Buddha taught totally out of compassion. He had no need for anybody. 
He had no need for anybody's approval or anybody's support. If he'd had to die or after his awakening, okay, that would have been no defect in his, his awakening. That was all perfect. So he taught totally out of compassion. Nowadays we're told that everybody speaks out of a desire for power, for influence over other people. But here's something that's very different. And the duties that the Buddha teaches you are not duties he imposes on you. He says, these are duties for your own good. Again, unlike the duties that society will place on you. So you have to choose whose set of values is really in your own best interest. And learn how to play by the, the rules that the Buddha set down. Even if it means that other people who are familiar with you in your old roles that you took on in the ver various games, over their various rules, wouldn't understand. So this is how you use concentration. Use it as a foundation. You use it as a connection. As soon as you breathe in, breathe out, the breath should remind you of the good things that would have taught you around the breath. And remember, you don't have that much time to breathe. You don't know how much time you've got. It may be a hundred years, but a hundred years is a short time when it's gone. It's not like as we go through the hundred years we have a room in the mind where we can stash them up and they stay. They slip away. Our memories slip away. The pleasures of the moment slip away, slip away. What stays are our actions and the quality of the mind that develops from those actions. When you've won that, that's when you've really won. Mm 